Hi, I'm Will from Venture to Rome, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, what is Will doing sitting at this table? Yeah, I don't do it very often, but here I am. The reason I'm at this table is because I have so much stuff to show you that I need a little flat surface. So I'm gonna show you a bunch of stuff that I've been saving. I've been saving this video for a long time because I have so much stuff that I think is really great overlanding gear that I want to tell you about. Everything I'm gonna show you is stuff that I've used on the trail, stuff that I know about, and I'm really excited to share this stuff with you. And it's a wide range of things. So let's get into the things right away. Okay, so most of the things I'm gonna show you can all make really good gifts for like birthdays or the holidays. They can be good gifts to yourself, um, but mostly it's just really good gear, good things that are useful when you're out camping, overlanding, hiking, uh, car camping, off-roading, like you name it, right? These are just things that I've used while doing all of those activities that I think will come in really handy. So I'm gonna start with some small things that are less expensive, but really, really useful. So let me show you the first thing I have here, which is da -da -da -da, glue treads. These are like my, my new kind of favorite thing because they're sidewall repair kits that actually work. I have seen them work in person. I was at Overland Expo East and Morrison Off-Road, who leads guided tours in the East, was there doing demonstrations in front of the Revere Overland booth, who I was there to help with because Rob's my boy and he's got a lot of awesome stuff. By the way, you can get these on revereoverland.com. Please go there and support local overlanders. Um, and they ripped open a sidewall and they patched it with this thing and it worked. It worked really, really well. So this would be a really useful gift if, if like there's an off-roader in your life and you don't know what to get them, this would be really great. This is a really good gift for yourself, but most importantly, it's just like an essential piece of gear that you should have in your car, not even for you necessarily, but if you come up on somebody who has a torn sidewall, these can really help get them home. Next, two small but mighty pieces of gear. These are the uh, Bigfoot Bushcraft Fire Starters. I love these. They sent me a pack, like free of charge, like they sent me uh, this, like, I don't know, two years ago or something. I still haven't used all the stuff that they sent me, um, but they're these little wax plugs that you pull apart like this, and then you just kind of set them up like this, like in your fire. And I'm, I'm not kidding you, even with my um, like flint spark stick, it's one strike and these things start. They start really, really easy. They burn for a long time and they really help you get your fire going at camp. Okay, so the next thing I wanna show you is this. You probably can't read what this is because it's so used, but it is a thermocell bug repellent, mosquito repellent device. So it's battery powered. So it just, you charge it up through USB. A single charge easily gets me through a weekend of camping. Um, and what it does is, it has this little thing that's got stuff in it that bugs don't like. It heats it up, it kind of absorbs it through this wick and it um, disperses this stuff that they don't like and it actually works. Ooh, this is one of my favorite small and cheap things. This is a Night Buddy headlamp. And the cool thing about this is that it's got like this band of light, which is really nice just for like walking around camp. I always kind of put it on like a little cattywampus. <laughs> so people are like, well, do you know how to put a headlamp on? Which is, you know, something you have to get used to. You have to kind of figure out like where is center on this thing. But it's really cool because it has a red light. It has like different levels of white light. Um, you, can, you can buy a, a cheaper version of these on Amazon. It's not a night buddy which we have, we bought two of those for the kids and we bought two night buddies, which are a little bit more expensive for me and Kate. And the biggest difference is uh, these have a red light. And at night, I love having a red light and the cheap ones don't. Um, I think like the cheap ones are like 25 bucks for two and these are like 25 bucks a piece or something like that. And I love the kind of spread of light. It doesn't like shine right in somebody's face, you know, of like blinding them when you're talking to them. Um, and you can kind of look around without doing the thing at night where you're like always doing this with a headlamp because you're just trying to see stuff. Well, this just kind of lights it up and you can look at things normal. <laughs> so anyway, night body headlamp. 
Okay, so my next small but mighty and relatively inexpensive piece of gear is this. So this is for folks who have a truck, who have a truck bed and a camper shell on it. So this is a liner that you put down across the gap in your tailgate and it keeps the dust from coming out. This is like not very expensive. I think this was 25 or $35 on Amazon. You know, if you're having dust problems, I feel bad for you, son. I got 99 problems, but dust ain't one anymore. So that's another one. I would be remiss to do any kind of a gear show without talking about first aid kits. You have to have one. If you don't have one, what are you doing? All right, if you know someone who's off-roading, this is always a safe gift. Um, and you can kind of pay what you want. Ours is a hodgepodge. I have like, you know, hurt-free Band-Aid stuff, like disinfectant. We use this all the time with our kids. Um, we have <clears throat> tape, <laughs> Band-Aids, gauze, just like um, tweezers, um, Neosporin. This is one we use all the time too, after bite. It's like uh, if you get a bug bite, which the kids and everyone always gets something when we're out there, it helps the itch go away. Um, but honestly, we, we probably used this med kit at least once on every single trip. Sometimes it's been really bad. I've cut my finger so bad I had to uh, leave a trip and go to the emergency room and get stitches in my finger. Well, I ha had this and I could wrap it up in gauze and could keep the bleeding down um, so the doctors could stitch it up. So you just have to have one. Get the med kit, but then definitely learn how to use it. And this is a cool little thing from Metal Cloak. This is a vent cover for JLUs and JTs. And it basically, you pop out the plastic thing and you put in this cool kind of two-toned metal thing. There's a, you know, gray and black behind it. So it just looks kind of neat and cool. It's not super expensive and um, it's a great way to dress up your rig. There's also a ton of other stuff from Metal Cloak. So the name Metal Cloak, they work with metal. So there's like coat racks, smokeless stoves, uh, all kinds of stuff that's like not necessarily a suspension or a driving component or armor or something like that. It's like stuff that you can put in your garage. So on their website, they have a separate section for these kinds of things. And you might just browse it if you're looking for a gift for somebody because there's some pretty good ideas in there that it's like, you know, cool stuff they've made with metal on the Metal Cloak website. Okay, my last small but mighty piece of gear is this thing. This might be like my favorite piece of gear that I have, that I take with me camping. It is so useful. So this, is an SE6 bushcraft knife. It's made in the USA. It's a uh, full baton, so the, so the metal comes all the way through the handle. And it's just the right size. It's six inches long. So I use this probably the most to baton wood at camp. You know, you put this in a piece of wood and then you get another piece of wood and you kind of hit it and you, you kind of do it as an ax. Um, and it's really good for making really small kindling. You can use it for a hammer if you need a pound in steaks because it has this full baton. Um, you can use it to cook with. I, I use this to cook with sometimes or to eat with. I mean, it's just really, really great. And it comes with this case that like just has the most satisfying pop when you pop it in there. It's just like, you just, you just like do that all day. So satisfying. And it keeps it in there and keeps it, you know, protected. But SE6, you can get these on Amazon. You can get them on their website. Um, get one that has this kind of full baton in the handle. Um, and then the rest is just, you know, how you think you might want to use it. So anyway, a bushcraft knife is such a great gift, such a great tool. And I, I use it every single time I go out. Okay, let's talk axes. I love, I love axes. So the first one I want to show you is this one. This one's a special axe. This is a Pulaski axe. So this is used uh, by Weldon firefighters still today, this model. It was developed by Ed Pulaski. You may have heard me tell this story before if you've seen the Idaho BDR movie. Um, he was a, back in the early 1900s, he was a, a ranger and he developed this tool. So it's an ax on one side, it's like a hoe on the other. It's a super useful recovery tool for off-roading. It chops, it splits, it digs, it's just, Awesome, and it's from a legend of a guy. Next, I wanna show you the S-Wing. So this was my first ax, actually, my first overlanding ax, and it's just built so solid. It's metal all the way through. It's more of a chopper than a splitter. Um, and I, you know, I didn't really know that. I have just hacked this thing 
a million times. You can use it as a hammer on the back too. It's, you know, super useful. I've had to like reshape the ax blade here because I have just murdered it. But you know, this thing will last forever and it wasn't that expensive and it's super, super useful. And it's really easy to pack because it's so small. So you, you can get away with splitting with this thing, even though it's not a splitter, as long as you're not splitting anything that, that's too big. So let me show you my two splitters. So this is a DeWalt three pound splitter. I love this thing. This is like my first splitting ax and I've used it a ton. It splits really, really well. Um, nice solid handle. I like that it has like kind of a, a rubber grip down here so you can actually really get a good grip on it um, and it works super well. I think this is, I think this maybe was 50 bucks at Home Depot. Then recently I got this bad boy, which is a Fiskars, which um, is, it's, it's a little bit more of a splitter. So the blade has more of a wedge to it and it splits just mwah, so nicely. So this is fantastic if you're splitting bigger wood. I think it's the same weight. I think it's a three pound. Any of these can work as an all round ax. You know, like the Fissers can work as an all round ax, even though it's more of a splitter. The DeWalt can work as an all round, even though it's, um, you know, it'll just take more effort to split the big things. Um, this can even work. Of course, the Pulaski kind of does it all. But, you know, I find myself using an ax when I need to split a, a bigger piece of wood, which is why I don't really take this one anymore. And it's why I've been using this one more on the trail. Um, because once it gets down to a smaller piece of wood, that's when I use my knife to make kindling or to make smaller pieces of wood. That SE6 is just fantastic for that. So um, I don't like using these heavy axes to like, you know, oh, exactly, to like, you know, do cut smaller pieces. I don't like getting my hands anywhere close to these things because they will just take a finger right off. So that's why I tend to use these type axes more than these type axes, but you can't go wrong. They're, none of them are very expensive. I think the Fiskars was the most expensive, but maybe 60 bucks. Um, and, uh, and they're super useful. So those are my, that's my axe collection. The next piece of gear I wanna to talk to you about, I don't have with me here. It's actually installed on my rig and that's the Kraken air inflation system from Epic Adventure Outfitters or Epic four wheel drive. So it is a four tire air inflation system that's made to hold the, um, ARB dual piston air compressor. So it's really clever. It installs really nicely under the passenger seat and it basically has an attachment for two hoses on either side of your rig. So you can hook up all four tires at once and let it run. And I'll tell you, my air up experience has improved so much with that thing. I am the first one done airing up in my group almost always now. And I'm like airing up my rig, and then I'm helping somebody else air up. I, I will not be going back to a single tire system now that I have tasted the bounty of the Kraken. All right, the next thing I wanna show you is this big orange monstrosity from Roofness. This one's from Roofness. Now, I don't, this came with my uh, tent from Roofness. So I, I didn't go out and buy this, but what this is, is a privacy tent. So. These are like essential if you're going out with kids or you know, if you're going out with you know, anybody. If you're on your own, do your thing, whatever you wanna do. But if you're with people, chances are they probably want privacy. And this is great. It's everything from like a changing room, if people wanna go stand up and change, to a toilet room, to a shower room. Roof, this is a roof nest one, but um, there's other brands that are the same style. It's a pop-up privacy tent. What's so great about them is that they pack down so small and they're so lightweight. They pack in the back of the Jeep, really, really easy. I actually just put this in the trash and they get the job done. Okay, okay, next I wanna talk recovery. This is probably the best all-in-one recovery solution that's out there on the market right now. It's made by Factor 55. Yes, they are a channel sponsor. I also just love them because they're from Boise, they're an innovative company. They started this kind of recovery gear revolution, innovation that's been happening over the past 15 years. It started with Factor 55 because they are the ones who designed closed loop winching and it's just a really, really cool company. So they make this um, recovery kit that has kind of everything you need if you're a basic off-roader. So it has a really nice toe strap, it has like a little small kind of harness strap, it has a tree strap. Um, it has 
a way to um, splice your winch line if, if you need to. Uh, don't ask me how to do that because I have no idea. But if someone was there that did know how to do it, I'd have the tools for them to do it. It comes with uh, two soft shackles. So you've got this kind of super um, uh, beefy soft shackle, which is really good if you're putting it on some hard surfaces because sometimes those hard surfaces can rough up or even ruin other soft shackles. This is just kind of like your standard regular soft shackle. Um, it comes with a couple of really nice um, D-rings or however you call these, I just call them D-rings. You've got your kind of hard connectors there as well. Um, and then it comes with this thing, which is maybe my favorite piece of gear that they make, which is essentially a snatch block. So instead of having a big heavy snatch block, um, you have this thing, which you, you run your winch line through this um, and you put this through a soft shackle um, and it's really light and easy to pack away. The bag itself um, can be used as a winch line weight. So you put that over the winch line. So if it does break, this thing will um, help you out. And then probably the coolest thing, I, one of the things I love about Factor 55 is how seriously they take themselves and how seriously they take recovery. So you get one of these books. You get one of these books that's like, this is a basic guide to kinetic recovery. There's a basic guide to winch recovery. When you're in a recovery situation, pull out this book and be like, okay, what do we got going here? You look it up and it's like, okay, this is a stage two recovery. I need about six feet of slack in my kinetic rope and blah, 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 blah. Like it's all here. So not only do you have the gear, they have information education on how you use it. Now, this whole kit's pretty expensive. I think this kit is a thousand dollars or something like that, or in that kind of general ballpark. So it's not a cheap kit. This is high quality USA made stuff, but you can buy these pieces individually as well. So if you just wanted to up your soft shackle game, you could get, a soft shackle, or if you just wanted to get this really cool snatch block thing, you could just get any one of these pieces they sell individually as well. So you don't have to spend a thousand dollars to up your recovery game. But if you do, I believe, this is my opinion, my opinion only, you will be buying the best kind of all-in-one recovery bag um, that's out there on the market right now from Factor 55. So that's it. Staying on the Factor 55 bandwagon, these are fantastic winch hooks. They're so good. This is the uh, Flat Link E. And if you don't know how these work or why they're better, it's a closed loop winching system. So it's not a hook that can slide on or slide off. It's a closed loop. So it's way more sturdy. You can keep it flat against your winch uh, or your fair lead on your winch, um, which is that's hence the, the, the flat hook um, or the, the flat link. Um, they come or you can buy if you don't, if you don't have one of these, you, a rope guard. So it's just one of those things. It's like when it comes to recovery stuff, get the best because you're gonna want it when you're in a situation where you're trying to move your 5,000 pound rig or we've been in situations where we were moving somebody else's 7,000 pound rig uphill out of a, you know, over a rock. And having something like this just gives you more confidence and, and it's just safer. It's just, it's just safer. So that's that. You gotta have recovery boards. So it's a, like, you just gotta have them. So if you don't have them, get some. They're like so useful. I have used them many, many times. I have Max Tracks and I have these Bunker Industries and I have used the crap out of these Max Tracks. They're tried and true. They just, they work, they flex, they have good grip on them. They pack down really, really thin so you can easily carry four, which is what I do. You can get these, by the way, at revereoverland.com. I got these from revereoverland.com and Rob was able to rush ship them to me right before we went on the Nevada BDR. And we wound up using these things, I don't know, like six or seven times on that trip. So thanks, Rob. Um, if you're interested in getting these, definitely go to revereoverland.com and look there first. Link in the description. So Max Tracks, great gift, kind of pricey. Bunker Industries is making a really interesting recovery board. I can't tell you whether or not this is a really great recovery board. So I know I said I've used everything. I haven't had the chance to use these yet, but they're, they're interesting enough that I at least wanted to show it to you. So you've got this 
like stainless steel on either side. The idea is that this is gonna give you better grip and it's real, real grippy. Um, it's a really flexible uh, board, so it flexes a lot. I'm not sure if that's good or bad. It has grippers on the bottom, which is you know good for it staying in place when you need the traction. And then on the top, yeah, it has these um, removable, replaceable teeth on it. And mine came with, I don't know, enough to replace all of these probably three times. There's a like, huge bag of them. So I have had cheap recovery boards before, ones that cost like 70 or 80 bucks for two. <laughs> And they worked okay. You know, I used them in recovery situations and they worked, they broke, which really sucked, but something, you gotta have something in those situations. And even a bad recovery board is better than no recovery board. If, you're, if you've got the budget, definitely go with something like ARB Treads, which I've used and loved, Max Tracks, which I've used and loved. And the cool thing about those is they generally have like a lifetime guarantee. So if you do break them or if they fail you in some way, Assuming you get out of the recovery situation, you can then send in a claim and they'll send you new boards. We've had that happen with ARBs um, once already. My buddy Chris, we broke his and they sent us new ones like, I don't know, like a week later or something like that. He had brand new rec recovery boards. So that's what I like about these kind of more established companies that specialize in this. But interesting, just wanted to show you that. I'm not endorsing it, but it's interesting. Okay, staying with recovery, Shovels, you gotta have one. You have to have a shovel. These I got in Nevada after my Smitty Built shovel broke in the middle of a mud bog. My beautiful, great, cheap, folding Smitty Built shovel served me well for five years, but finally kicked the bucket. The first thing we did when we got to Elko, Nevada, back to civilization, is we went to a farm store and we bought two shovels. So here's my thinking around this. You have a big shovel that can handle a lot. That can, you know, you can dig and chip and, and scoop, you know, with, with one of these big ones. But sometimes you need to get in around the tires or get kind of under the rig. And so having a small one is really, really great too. Now, you can pay whatever you want for a shovel. You can pay whatever you want. You can pay 350 bucks for a shovel. You can pay 20 bucks for a shovel. So my opinion is if you want to pay 350 bucks for a shovel, you should do that because you need to have a shovel. And if that makes you feel good about having it, then do it. And from my knowledge, I don't think those are bad shovels necessarily, like crazy beaver shovels or some of these other kind of fancy shovels that have like a hammer on one side or an ice pick or whatever. Like, I think they're good shovels. So if that's your budget and you wanna have something that's cool and high quality, go get one of those. But if you don't have the budget for a really expensive shovel, then go to the farm store, go to DMB Supply or whatever it is, Home Depot, Lowe's, you know, Kmart, Walmart, they all sell shovels. So like, you know, if you don't have one, shame on you, go get one. Now I wanna show you something that's somewhere in the middle. It's like not, I guess it can be used for recovery, but it's really just a great tool, which is this. Oosh, kapoom, sha. This beautiful 16 inch DeWalt brushless motor electric chainsaw. I have used this thing a bunch. It cuts so well. It's really, really good. It's a 60 volt, is that right? 60 volt. Um, and the cutting power on this is fantastic. I have two batteries. So, you know, I have one, one on the charger, one on the chainsaw. And so, you know, I've got a good amount of cutting time if I need it. It's got all the safety stuff you need. It's got the brakes and all that stuff. Um, and, it, you know, they're not cheap, but they're so nice. They're so useful when you're on the trail and you're running this stuff. Anyway, a DeWalt, DeWalt, Chainsaw. On along the same lines is this, a chainsaw bag. This is a very cheap chainsaw bag. This one is from Amazon and it gets the job done, but I would say it gets the job done just barely. There are better companies that make chainsaw bags. They're very expensive though, which is why I bought the cheap one. I figured I would just buy this one, probably ruin it but test it out, see what I really kind of want in a bag. And I've had this one for one season for about a year now. And it's, it's you know, it's holding up, but it's like, it's complaining. Um, in here, I have batteries, charger, oil, and these beautiful gloves, these Milwaukee gloves. I love these. So gloves make a great gift, but besides sending them as a gift to somebody, they're just, you just gotta have them. You gotta have these on the trail. They are so nice 
so useful. The best piece of recovery gear, the most essential one is gloves. They stop you from cutting your fingers. They keep your hands, you know, free of all the muck and guck that you might be into. And they're just dang nice to have. So get some gloves You try this bag if you want to. You need to have a bag probably. Um, you could get this one on Amazon or you could go look at a number of different places that make really nice chainsaw bags. Let's talk heat at camp. So probably have seen these. Everybody's making a video about these right now. Vever, Viver, Vevla. They have sent me three diesel heaters. And I really want to love diesel heaters. And I do love them. But they are also finicky. I will tell you this, when you get them to work, it's the mwah, chef's kiss of heat. It's dry heat, it comes in constantly. You know, it doesn't use a ton of diesel, it doesn't use a ton of power once it gets going. And you're like, a night that's like zero degrees turns into a night that's like 65 degrees in your tent, which feels really, really warm and luxurious. So I do like the design of this one. It's got Bluetooth on it, so you can control it from your phone, which is cool. They come with uh, basically a, a vent an air intake and a, an exhaust vent that you kind of hook up down here. So you gotta bring those with you at camp, hook it up. Um, but this is nice because it's all in one, the gas tanks in here and everything. When they work, it is incredible. I think for anybody who likes to go out in cold weather, having a diesel heater is like essential. I can't wait to show you these. You're probably like, yeah, we already have those, Will. These are so awesome in cold weather. Um, they're insulated overalls. They're like work overalls. These are from Burn. These are Carhartt. I think these are 80 or 90 bucks. These are probably like 150 bucks or something like that. Carhartt just costs more. I'm not sure there's that big of a quality difference. I think the canvas on these is thicker and probably a little bit better. But ultimately, you you put these things on. You can put them over your boots. Look at this. Look at like you just slap those over your boots, button them up. They're kind of like indestructible because they're made. It's like work wear. And they're so warm. So you, you put this thing, it keeps all the heat all the way up to your chest. You put a big coat over it and like you are sitting pretty in really, really cold weather. Now, let me show you uh, for cold weather, something that I love. Hold on. This is a Selka bag. This is basically a sleeping bag onesie. It is unbelievably comfortable. And I'm not talking about hanging around camp. You can wear this to hang around campfire. Great. I, you know, for me, I'm going to be wearing the, the overalls probably because they're more rugged and um, they look, you know, a little more manly. These make you look like the Stay Puff Marshmallow, but this is really like if you're sleeping in cold weather and you don't have a diesel heater or your diesel heater's acting up, having one of these, it's like having a sleeping bag inside your sleeping bag. So I have a zero degree sleeping bag and having this on inside that sleeping bag is like, I'm just like, I'm just gonna hibernate through the winter. It's so warm and comfy. It has a hood on it. So it basically like zips all the way up and it keeps all your body heat in. And then you get in the sleeping bag. So for me, cause I do like to go winter camping a little, Selka bag, it is so nice. Okay, let's talk bathing on the trail. The geyser. We bought this a few years ago uh, because the value proposition for this is that you just use less water. And so since we are Jeep people, we're Jeeple, um, we don't have very much room and we have terrible like payload in our rigs. So it's basically like car camping slash backpacking because Jeeps are just terrible for carrying stuff. And so we don't have that much water. We can't carry that much water. We carry, you know, maybe four to six gallons of water um, for a weekend trip. Um, and that's all we have to carry with us even on longer trips. We just have to like refill our water as we go. And this uses uh, less than a gallon of water to give someone a full bath. The way it does that is um, you basically use your jet boil to heat up the water. Um, you do like one jet boil worth of water, put that in there. Then you put, fill it up with cold water. It comes out to be like 98 degrees or something like that. Let's say 90, 100 degrees. And it'll tell you when like it's warm enough, it'll tell you when it's, if it's too hot and it won't turn on if it's too hot because I don't want you to get burned. Um, and then you, you pop in this spongy sponge. Um, it connects like so. And then it has a pump in there. You, you know, you connect it to your 
external battery or whatever, you turn that pump on um, and you can control the flow of water through the sponge. And so what you get is like a really nice sponge bath. And you can actually, if you have some water left, you can actually pop this thing off and kind of use it as a shower if you have a little bit of water left. But I have never, I've taken a lot of showers in these and I've never got to the end and thought, oh, I wish I had more hot water. You know, I have been very comfortable, very warm water and used very little water, which is why I like these. Okay, these are levelers. So I got these for Christmas one year. But let me tell you kind of how I use them. So clearly you can use them to level your rig. I, I tend to have six of them with me, but they also work as a jack stand if I needed to have jacked on top of these things before. You can spread them out and make like a shower floor. So if you're, if you've got a privacy tent and you don't have a false floor in there, um, you can put these down on top of the dirt and you can stand on these things. Water drains through, you don't get muddy feet when you're done with your shower. So we've used them for, for that, which is kind of nice. I think they're really useful. They're really inexpensive. And uh, you know, I'm, I have surprised myself by how many times I've used these. If you're watching this and you haven't subscribed to the channel, I would love for you to subscribe. I'm trying to get to 50,000 subscribers and every single subscriber counts. It doesn't cost you anything and it means a great deal to the channel. So thanks in advance for subscribing. Until next time, I'm Will from Venture to Rome. Thanks for watching.